Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel. And I've started to learn that a lot of you guys actually kind of like my rant videos because sometimes it really proves how knowledgeable I am and how much I can explain things and how well I can explain things. So today's rant video is fresh. I'm still mad for one of my friends that actually had to go through this and I feel so bad for him. Obviously, I'm going to leave names out of this. I'm going to leave, you know, any kind of info out of this. The only reason I'm showing this photo that he sent me is because it can't be used to identify any place or anybody. It's just basically, you have no idea. I could have Googled this photo. Now, you can take my word that this is a photo that was sent to me. And I'll get with you guys about why I'm just so mad right now. <laughs> so... First of all, a little background for those who don't know. I've been a microelectronics technician, <clears throat> excuse me, for over 10 years now, starting at a small cell phone, actually no, starting at a computer repair shop in 2010 called DC Parts. And there I was doing mainly virus removal and uh, computer testing and computer building for people. So. At that point, even cell phones were barely a thing. Uh, smartphones, I don't even know when the first actual iPhone came out, but I didn't start doing iPhone repairs until a few years later uh, at a shop um, that was actually in a mall, and I was at a mall kiosk for uh, about six months. I started with iPhone 4. And then moved on to the 4S, moved on to the 5s, the 5Cs. The iPhone 5C had just come out when I was doing my, uh, when I was starting iPhone repairs. From there, it moved into iPads, then some Galaxy devices. I moved to another repair shop about a year later, uh, doing the same thing. They still owe me uh, two or three paychecks, but it's way past the time when I can get them, unfortunately. It's been probably five years since then. <clears throat> From there, I moved to doing repairs for a very large company, and I was actually in charge of doing uh, Zebra printer and Zebra handheld uh, device repairs. And the company that I worked for, uh, that was uh, 2019 I got that job. And that company that I worked for, I did eight hours a day. When I got there, they were doing m mostly uh, hardware repairs on the devices that I was in charge of for the person that I was replacing because she was getting a raise and moving to a different position. So when I got to that point, uh, I decided, unlike somebody Unlike most other people who work there, I actually opened up the documentation from the uh, company Zebra who makes those printers. I found their documentation using some Google searches, doing a file type PDF search, and I managed to find the documentation. Started reading it and realized there was a lot of software stuff that could actually repair the hardware. So I would do things like uh, I created my own script. It was a text file, and I would send it to every printer, and it would reset the MAC address, the IP address, the it would reset the whole printer. It would uh, <clears throat> align everything correctly. It would make uh, the little black bar sensors on the back work if they weren't functioning before. It was this whole long, like, 25 lines of code is all it was, but for those printers, that was a lot. And it took the average repair down time down from like 45 minutes per printer to less than 15. So obviously I was a great asset for that. And I'd probably save them a boatload of money on actual printers. <clears throat> so with that, um, I was laid off due to COVID. And now I'm in a new repair shop that you guys know of as uh, Geoga iPhone Repair. We have a swap a store, you know, I, you can deal directly with me if you need a repair. We do mail and stuff. And that's where all my experience comes in. That's why I feel like I'm actually allowed to talk on this subject. Sure, I don't have my A plus certification. Sure, I don't have my network certification. I don't have a Microsoft certification or an Apple certification. But I have more experience 
added up from years of working with different people learning their skill trade and learning their little tricks for different things that it's kind of all combined into just me being not to toot my own horn but kind of a mastermind of if i can't do it i know either a who to ask b where to look online c how to find it online if i don't know where to look or d i kind of just have the experience enough to guess and that's where it all comes into play with this image what you're looking at here is one of my friends got their battery replaced in their iphone uh, I think he said it was a 6S. Now, if you know the difference between the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6S, the iPhone 6 doesn't have any adhesive around the edges. You can just pop a little pry tool into the bottom called Nicesmo. Um, here, I'm going to pull up a uh, place where you can buy repair tools, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just decided to pull up iFixit. This isn't the toolkit that I personally use, but I have used it before. It's a fantastic toolkit. I just think it's really overpriced, in all honesty. But if you're getting started with repairs and you want the top-of-the-line stuff, get the ProTech toolkit, honestly. But don't practice on your friend's phones. Buy broken phones off eBay. Jesus Christ. Anyway, so the uh, most important tool in this entire kit, on this entire screen for opening up an iPhone is going to be this guy right here and your guitar picks. Now you can go on eBay and buy a bucket of 500 guitar picks for like $10 and you'll be set for like a good year and a half to three years depending on how violent you are with them and how often you do repairs. Um, but you use this so basically on an iPhone 6 when you open it up from the bottom uh, bottom left corner there's a little gap there you shove the corner of this thing into that little corner and you just slightly twist twist just enough that you hear a little popping noise from there you use one of these guys to just go around the edges and pop whatever other ones haven't popped yet and then just lift it off very gently the iPhone 6s is when they actually introduced adhesive to start making the devices water resistant IP 68 uh, water resistant to be exact so there's a little bit of adhesive around the edges now if it's the very first time that phone is being open if you're a newbie to repairs yes you need heat and maybe isopropyl alcohol to make your life easier so what you would do is you would put this in that bottom corner just like any other phone and at least do a little bit of a pop and then do uh, one of these guitar picks and what you do with that guitar pick is just the corner and then with the uh, isopropyl alcohol, you'll drizzle it on the top of this and have the guitar pick kind of angled downward but in the edge of the phone. And you use that when the device is warm, let's say on the fairly warm side. And you just lightly go along the edges very slowly and just tear that adhesive. You don't want to put these devices face down on a heating pad because that's going to melt the LCD and cause you to have dead spots in your LCD, which we'll get to later, uh, of why I'm so mad right now. Never do a device face down on a heating mat. If you have a heat gun, you're a lot safer, a lot better off. So I say heating mat and heat gun. You don't see either of those in this image. So let me explain something here. This is what this guy is using for a heat mat. This is not a heat mat. You cannot make this a low enough temperature that it will not damage your screen. This is for doing glass repair. So if you want to do glass only, you get a uh, piano wire, very uh, thin piano wire, and you use this with isopropyl alcohol. You heat that glass and LCD up very hot. It's honestly, it's very it's fairly often that I do not see an LCD uh, survive this kind of repair technique if you're very new to doing it and don't know what you're doing. So what you do is you take that piano wire and you go through the between the LCD and the glass very slowly and you peel the LCD off. You don't use this because it can't go to a low enough temperature. You do not use this 
to melt the adhesive around an iPhone 6S's edges in order to pop the screen off. To give you an example, let me pull up the guide here to give you a visual. So as you can see, obviously there's your two bottom screws. What you wanna do is they recommend doing adhesive and then tape like this to lift it up. As you can see, you can lift it up just enough also doing this method to get a gap. And then that's when you wanna put your little guitar pick in the bottom there and run it along those edges. As you'll see, I never use these. Don't use these, they don't work. Use this if you have neck pain and back pain. Don't use this on an iPhone. Trust me, they actually, like, seriously, great for neck pain. <laughs> Not even joking. But what you want to do is, you know, once you get that slightly lifted, you get your little tool in there. I don't even recommend using one of these. This is almost too thick. Um, you can damage the LCD with this or even crack the glass if you push it in too far. If you're a slippery-handed person, let's say, or a shaky person, don't use this. What you want to use is a guitar pick. Don't go along the edges with one of these. It's awful. You want to use one of those guitar picks and do exactly what they're doing, but with the guitar pick, or if you are very steady-handed, use one of these. That's also what these are for. These are called opening tools. So you put that in the little bottom corner right here, and instead of doing this whole twist motion, which can be very useful, I don't understand why they're using an iPhone 6S that's been open before. This iPhone 6S has no adhesive on it. What a terrible example phone. I should have just pulled up a Jerry Rig Everything video. Yeah, there's no adhesive there. So anyway, um, you basically run the guitar pick along the edge very, not very far in. You don't want to go very far in. You'll either tear uh, cables or damage the LCD, or both. There's a number of things that can go wrong if you go too far underneath. You want to do the very tip of the guitar pick. The guy that did my friend's phone used this thing to heat the screen, got it way too hot, caused black spots to be in the LCD, which means he killed pixels by melting the plastic um, on the LCD. I would show pictures, but I don't want to give any identifying information. So give me one second. I'll see if I can Google an image of a damaged LCD to show you an example. This works. So he has spots like this on his LCD now. One of the spots is right up by the battery percentage. That one looks like a uh, prying damage crack. So it cracked some of the LCD and it's causing those spots as well as the heat damage. He also has two other spots on the screen at the bottom, like like here and here. I just said like twice in a row, like I'm 14. So he has two other spots somewhere around here and here. Those both look like heat damage, but they kind of look like this. That's going to be from the damage of this guy just not knowing what he's doing and not doing it properly on opening the device and causing the damage because he's using the improper heat pad. It also doesn't look like he has any isopropyl alcohol around here. He has water on his desk where he's working. That's dangerous. I don't want to know why he has water directly on his desk. That is the biggest no ever. And he just doesn't have enough room. Like, how does he not mix up screws and stuff like that? It doesn't look like there's a screw mat anywhere around here. I just... Anybody with a setup like this, never give them your phone. Never give them your phone. This guy destroyed my friend's phone. He needs a whole new screen. I wouldn't trust the battery that's in there because it was probably a bottom of the barrel buy from like Ally Express. And especially if you have something newer, you need to have an Apple OEM battery. You do not want to have a non-OEM battery in your iPhone in 2021. It's just not worth it. Granted, yes, like iPhone X's, XS's, and some other ones, now they actually detect if your battery has been changed by a third-party repair shop like the one I work for. A 6S doesn't give you those warnings.
This phone needs to have a proper technician open it up, put a new battery in it, and a new screen on it, and the guy that owns this setup needs to pay for it. It's... Oh, I'm so mad even for my friend. This, The person that has this little tech setup needs to just sell their crap and change... Uh, change profession, professions. Uh, professions. Yes, I can say that word sometimes. It's... I wish you guys could actually see my face. Granted, I'm too fat to put myself on camera. I don't like how I look. <laughs> wow, that got dark. Um, yeah, it. this guy doesn't need to do repairs on anyone's devices. He needs to buy broken devices on eBay or something like that, or from me, practice on those, and then try on friends' phones, family members' phones, people who aren't going to get as mad as if I like walked into this guy's shop and gave him a phone to fix. Granted, that would probably never happen because I'll just take it to work and do it. But let's say I'm just a regular person. I take it to him to be fixed because I don't have the tools. If I received this phone back, I would raise hell. This guy owes my friend a new screen, new battery, a full refund, and should actually pay a different shop himself. This is not a tech setup you trust. No one with a setup like this should be trusted. Also, glass only repairs on iPhones and Samsung devices or any other devices. Most of the time, do your research before you go and get a repair. See what it actually takes to repair the device yourself. In all honesty, if you've ever taken apart anything with a basic screwdriver, and you have access to the proper screwdrivers, I would say anybody can do an iPhone screen repair themselves on something like an iPhone 8 or older. Granted, if you want to have a working phone when you're done and you don't quite trust yourself, still take it to a shop. But if you have any experience taking stuff apart and you know how to be gentle, I bet you can do it yourself. I would be very wary of recommending doing a battery yourself. If the little pull tabs underneath the battery don't work or you break them prematurely, getting that battery out and doing the pry of shame can actually cause your battery to explode and it's very dangerous. Only have somebody who's done batteries in their past and doesn't have a setup like this do your repair. So with all that, do your research. I think that's just the biggest thing to come out of this. Do your research. See what it takes to do the repair. Educate yourself on if it's what's called a fused screen or a glass only repair. Some iPads, for example, are glass only. Some, uh, some aren't. So for an example on that, revamp wholesale. Let me show you an example of an iPad that is a glass only repair. Uh, I'll go old enough here. So as you can see, the digitizer is also known as the glass uh, because it has the little plastic overlay that actually de uh, detects your touch. So these iPad minis, they can be done as a glass only. I already shop with you, I don't need a discount code. And then the LCD is actually separate. As you can see right here, it is a separate unit. Likewise, let's say the Mini 5, I think. The Mini 5 is a fused LCD. As you can see, the LCD is included with the glass. You can see it from the, has a black one right here. This is known as a fused LCD. If your device is fused, don't take it to someone who's offering glass only repairs. Yes, it may be cheaper, but it is way riskier and you are taking a chance at getting your LCD damaged because they are going to reuse your LCD, which has had broken glass up against it. So there's probably scratches and marks nicked into your LCD and you'll get it back and it'll look like there's maybe a piece of dust under the glass or something like that. It is very difficult to do a glass only repair unless you have the absolute proper tools. These are not the proper tools. This is only one step. I guarantee you this guy does not have 
the negative 185 degrees Celsius freezer that you need to split the glass from the LCD. This guy is doing it the hard way, and he's doing it the dangerous way that can melt your LCD. He's doing it the way that can damage everything during the repair process, frankly. I have done LCD and glass separations with a tool like this. If you don't have that freezer, it's incredibly difficult, and I do not recommend doing it. If you do have that freezer, and actually, I mean, maybe it's off camera or something like that. It doesn't look like this guy even has the uh, little trays to align the LCD on the glass correctly. This guy needs to just not do repairs ever. So I can rant about this all night and day, and I can educate you guys from start to finish on anything. If you want to know something, leave it in the comments down below. Give me a subject to rant on. I really like doing these rant videos. They're a lot of fun for me because it lets me show my knowledge. But also, if you want to see some repair videos or something like that, I am trying to get a setup set up for that. And we actually want to start YouTube videos of doing repairs, both software and hardware, for my uh, repair shop. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully those repair videos can start sometime soon. And I'll go from there. So, peace out, guys, I guess. If you have any questions on anything, leave them in the comments, because I will gladly answer any kind of repair questions that you might, may or may not have. I think a future video that I want to do is what a technician should have as far as a shop. The perfect shop setup for doing Android and uh, Apple repairs. So... I'll do that in the future because I have actually written that up in a document before where it was every single tool you could possibly need. And that was a lot of fun to actually scour the internet and find that stuff. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope you learned something because good lord, I'm so mad at this guy for his existence. Good l Oh god.